Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the my V2 Golf uh, LEGO GBC Golf Putter design, which is uh, this module right here. Uh, in the background we have the V1. So first let's have a quick look at some of the key difference between these two modules. So if we just put them up side by side like this, they are both GBC compliant, well, almost, that one's a plate higher. This one is certainly below that 10 bricks tall, which is excellent. Um, they have slightly different output heights. We can see here, actually, if I put the brick gauge up here, we can see there's about two bricks different in output height. Uh, and that is a direct translation from the input tray height, which is sort of two bricks on this one and three bricks on this one. So this one certainly has a large input capacity. Um, but there's some things about the V2 which sort of make it uh, a lot better. It's very much an improvement on the original. So let's have a look at those key differences. The first is this, which is the rotatable input tray. So if I disconnect that one there, that one, I'll just take that off there, put that on there, and that on there. So. What this means is that for modules that don't have much overreach, um, the V2 golf putter, let's just push that out of the way, the V2 golf putter can always square up its input um, to whatever module is coming into it. And it also means that depending on the golf course design you come having out of the right, um, it will always, you'll always be able to line up your input to your output. Um, so, when you're only using a couple of these modules, uh, that's a really good thing to have. All right, so uh, the next, let's just put that back. Okay, so the next key thing of V2 is obviously uh, a reduced pass, parts count. So if I get these side by side roughly, um, even just on a quick look, it looks like this has less parts and it definitely has less parts than the V1. Uh, it's also uh, a cheaper module to build just because I don't use as much trans clear. Really like the trans clear on this design, uh, but it's an expensive Lego brick to buy. So this one sort of keeps it down to a real minimum. Um, some of the less obvious changes in V2 are the piston design. So in V1, if I can get that there. So this, let's see if I can get that right. So in V1, we see that the piston overlaps the trans clear brick into regular brick. And what I've found is that that, when these are brand new, these two by four slopes, uh, you can get some jamming issues in this transition. And it's very hard, there's not really a good way out of it other than a bit of pre-wear. So one of the things that uh, the V2 does is that all the pistons, uh, there was a redesign to ensure that the pistons never overlap that transition. It's pretty close there, but it never overlaps it. Um, so they're probably uh, the, the sort of key main structural differences. Obviously there's a bit of a height difference. Um, the other thing that V2 was designed to do was have a range of heights. So it starts at this high, which is a little bit higher than V1. And then using these pieces over here, uh, it can extend out. Um, so let's have a look at that uh, extension. All right, so I'm just gonna get rid of the V1 right out of the way. All right, so <clears throat> in order to extend the module, um, we need uh, a couple of collection pieces. So the, 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 the V2 can be extended out either this high, which is uh, two and two thirds higher, or it can be extended out this high, five, oh, let's turn it the right, five high. So uh, to extend, we, there's a little bit of disassembly required. So we take the top off. front off oh, there we go it took a few extra pieces and I'll just put that one on there so um, oh, and put that pin back in there so these are the two key pieces of a v, of the v2 so we have the main the main sort of input area and pistons uh, and the initial piston here, this first one in the front, 
um, and we have this front section which is designed to be removed. Um, so it's important when this is separated that these uh, these thin 1x3 lift arms stay as part of this uh, stay as part of this end uh, because of the timing relationship between where this is and where this cam is on the back. All right, so let's do the first height extension. So I'll just put that to one side. We're going to grab our two piston wall extensions. Put one on there, the other one on there. We're going to extend these axles down the bottom once again. And once again, instructions are will be available for this extension. So if you're missing, if I'm going a little quick in the video, don't worry about it too much in that regard. We also need to add another part to the crankshaft. You'll notice I've got this funny, uh, I've got a mix of a one by one by five thin uh, and this one by five kind of bracket connector. Uh, that's merely because I've, I've run out of one by five thins at the moment, uh, and this is a good substitution. Uh, this you can substitute without having any issues. Uh, you cannot use these to substitute because if I put it here, just to quickly show you, uh, and we'll just put a dummy axle in here. Basically, when the crankshaft comes around, it'll foul on this power transfer axle. Whereas if we put the, just this one on, that, that just clears, but it clears nonetheless, so it's not a problem. All right, let's take that axle out. It's not actually part of it. All right, so yeah, we've got our crankshaft extension on. We've got our two pist cylinder wall extensions on. We need the piston itself. Um, this is using one of my, um, what I call a reinforced brick-built piston. Uh, where it has basically, we have the bricks up the uh, one side and this is the side the ball will travel on and we have this lift arm up the inside and it's all pinned together. So, it, so the only thing that can really come off is the very top. So this is quite a strong way of doing a brick built piston. Uh, we're going to slide our piston in on there. And ah, we also have to extend the drivetrain. So another one of these little extensions in there. There we go. All right, um, so uh, the la we need to now put the end wall back on. So let's just bring this down the bottom. Line this up down there. Okay, it can be a little bit fiddly, but it's not necessarily designed to be a super fast adaption, but it is designed to be an easy adaption. All right, get this started. Down do the ax oh come back down do the axles and that one and that one and just make sure that these gears are still together yep together 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 all right so now that we've got the end back on one last extension we need to extend the height of the little drive cam. Uh, if you're thinking this little bit looks a bit different uh, to the current instructions, that's because I'm working on a V2.2 putter, uh, and there'll be another video explaining the key differences from V2 to V2.2. Um, nothing too major, but just things to make it run a bit better um, and a bit easier to use. All right, uh, and oh, second last, we need to put our little height extensions on. One, two, and three and lastly the putter goes back on so we'll just drop that on there and there we go so now we have oh, now we have a v2 golf putter we've extended it by one piston oh i didn't quite get that in there there we go that's better i uh, extended it by a single piston uh, it is now two and two thirds higher um, and timing still exactly correct because the only thing in terms of timing that matters is this final stage uh, and because we didn't change the lift arms down the bottom they're still timed correctly to the cam on the outside um, so this is the first extension of v2 um, this this particular height is really good for highlighting a particular putter course so if i want something to sit a little bit higher like uh, my tower bridge putter course that I have, um, I use some, I, I, this is a good design for me because it lifts the whole module up and makes it a bit more prominent on the table. 
All right, so now let's um, convert it to the full five high tall one. Um, and once again, it's a very similar process. So again, the putter comes off the top. Oh, uh, just recover those plates. And uh, the only parts that aren't going to get reviewed are these three spaces. Everything else we're actually going to leave on because that forms part of the extension. Now, if you were going to do this extension, if you're going to build a V2 module and you were going to go straight for the five high adapter height, um, you wouldn't necessarily need to build like the cylinder extension walls as two separate uh, two by two brick towers. You could actually, because here we go, this is the extension. This is the cylinder I'm going to put. It's just another one of these towers. Click it on, make it build. You could actually build this as a single two by two by four. Um, but in this case, I like having the option of sort of being able to change between them. Uh, not that I probably do it a whole lot in practice, but uh, it just made the design a lot simpler uh, and makes showing the adaption. So uh, much very similar process. So we're putting another round of these on. Uh, another one of these on the drive. Another one over here. We're extending the crankshaft out. Oh, if I actually pay attention. Extending the crankshaft out. Yeah, two hands. Again, a little bit longer. Once again, we haven't changed this relationship here. That's where we've left the thin arms over there. Oh, that. let's move that over to this side just for, so it's a bit neater and one in there. All right. Um, oh, yeah, another piston, another one of these reinforced ones. You can see this really starts to make sense. This is a very long piston, um, but will not will not separate. So if you have a brick built piston this tall, uh, you probably have issues with it separating. So the reinforced style really, really helps prevent that, but still gives you the kind of benefits of being able to have this nice sliding action. So I drop the piston on. Um, and that's that. All right, back to the front again. All right, so so uh, one of the things about V2 that's a little different from V1, obviously, is these uh, the big 40 tooths. We dry, I use a 40 tooth drive gear on both sides. And the reason for that is when you extend it out. So this is starting to become a very long crankshaft. Um, and just to sort of make it run a little more I guess a little with a little less load and a little more efficiently, I drive from both sides. So we have this little this little transfer shaft here. Oh, let me get that on. This little transfer shaft here that transfers power from one side to the other. Uh, and there's a 40 tooth uh, uh, gear drive arrangement on each end. So I'll just get that back in there. All right, that's that one. That's that one. That's that one. Oh. Separate it a little. Uh, I'm gonna put this back. Oh. All right. All right. That's together. That's together. Dry shafts together. That's all glued together. All right. We can see our two pistons there. If I give it a quick spin, we can see the transfer happening. Um, so let's put on the extension panels. Uh, okay, and then put the golf course back on the top. Oh, ah, missed one extension. All right, so there's another one of these ones. I need to extend this up again, like so. All right, and then looks like we're mid part. Let's just take it off. There we go. And there we go. So that is now a five, an additional five tall bricks uh, from the putt. So uh, worth remembering in all of this that the input is still at 10 bricks tall. Um, so the height we have for our golf course to come down is now an almost an additional 10 bricks from the original height. Let's see if I can get that in a slightly better view position like that. So we've gone from a five bricks lift uh, to a full 10 bricks lift. Um, and what this is for, I haven't actually built any golf courses yet that this putter 
uh, design useful for, but I have uh, I have designed I have designed a few. I haven't built a few, but I have designed some which take advantage of this. Um, having the additional height allows you to do more elaborate sort of golf putter down paths uh, in terms of output. Um, so that was that. So that was the two conversions. Uh, we had the two and two third height. We have the full fibre tool. Uh, and this is one of the key aspects of the V2 putter design is this being able to extend it out rapidly. Uh, you probably could extend it out more. Uh, actually, no, you can't because, I don't know, maybe you can. Hmm. Anyway, I haven't had a need to make it any longer. Um, I imagine you could extend it for one or two more pistons if you really wanted to go uh, crazy with the height. Um, but other than that, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, the instructions are up on website, lauragee.com. Uh, certainly check them out if you're interested in uh, building golf courses on top of uh, this golf putter base. Thank you.